you think about it, the one seeming point, even in this particular teaching or reasoning, the whole un unequally yoked, the aspect of being unequally yoked is so very important because here in, um, here in Philippians chapter 4, where Hawadi Apollo speaks about um, the genuine yoke fellow, or those who are his true yoke fellow. And let's just um, refer to this again, where um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 3 says, And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers or my co-laborers whose names are in the book of life. But the point here is about yoke and yoke fellow. Now, we pointed to um, Matthew's gospel, Matthew's gospel chapter 11. And there in Matthew's gospel chapter, chapter 11, at verse uh, verses 28, 29, or 20, 29, 30, 31. Let's go there one more time because the whole idea about yoke, about the yoke is so important because then we hear people quoting the area of Scripture where it says, um, don't be unequally yoked, unequally yoked with what, like unbelievers. But the original concept or idea, it's important to understand the Hebraic or the Judaic reference to, yes, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, where the message or the new message of Yeshua is not the kingdom. Like in the present dispensation for Rastafari, the new message is not the kingdom. And, and this dispensation and the initial dispensation was the first it's first personal discipleship. If each of us as Rastafari must take upon ourselves personal discipleship with our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. That is key. That's the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. It's live and direct, as Matthew tells us, in more than one, one place. We quote this, we reference this particular speech that we've shown before and we show time and again. This one is Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie the first speaks on religion. You understand? And this is, this is a, a Christ man testimony as well as the Lutheran interview. In the Lutheran interview, he also speaks in a little bit more detail on, on, on not just religion, but, but true Christianity. You understand? And for us who carries that name, the namesake, Aras Tefari, in addition to knowing, well, the true meaning of Rastafari, not head creator, but the head to be reverenced, the head to be respected, and the connection with the tree of life and the Tiferet is, is, is the key. It's a, it's a key right there. But now in walking it out is personal discipleship. And one of the first lessons of personal discipleship is taking that yoke upon us. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Therefore, learning, teaching and learning is, is at the crux of it. And His Majesty, His Imperial Majesty, Adamal Wihala Salas, the conquering line, the tribe of Judah, he also quotes that elsewhere. You understand? He says, who can resist an invitation so full of compassion? See, one who resists that invitation is not going to have the doctrine or the true teaching. And this sort of one, according to Second um, Epistle of John, verses ten and eleven, we're not to invite into our our bait, our house, or the beta Rastafari, our house of Rastafari, or the true beta Christian, the house of the Messiah, or the house of the Anointed One, and the revelation of the Anointed. In this time, with the new name, is Rastafari. So we need to understand the matter about yoke the yoke and be unequally yoked. What does this really mean? He goes on to say, I am meek and lowly in heart, Obamarinya, the libe tohut nena, and tohut is a link with tut or tohuti in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. And then 
One more time, he says, my yoke, or ken bere. He says, for my yoke is easy. The, the yoke is not really difficult. See, somebody think, oh, a yoke, you mean like, like that animal or that oxen is yoked? You may think, oh, that's difficult. But no, his yoke, which he says is my yoke, is easy and my burden, you understand, that which we have to carry is not heavy. That which we have to do as true Arastafari or as a true Christian is not heavy. But we need to understand this matter of yoke, and I find that this particular um, portion of Scripture in Philippians is very interesting. He says, my true yoke fellow. Now, let's put this down on the side for a moment, and let's get the, another uh, Bible. This is the New Testament recovery Recovery Bible. I don't know if they still have it online, but BiblesForAmerica.org, and we receive this uh, free copy. And the footnotes are, are exquisite, are excellent. You understand? Because being able to study it, cross compare it, both in the Amharic and the Septuagint and the Greek and even the Hebrew New Testament, we find that it's it's right and exact, even though it's not going through translation of everything. But when you understand it in the more original and the clearer languages like the Royal Amharic, like the Septuagint Greek, and also like the Hebrew, and yes, the New Testament is in the Hebrew, and it's a very good Hebrew version of it. When it says, um, my yoke fellow, here, chapter 4, there's a footnote here, and that's verse 3. Here it reads the verse as, yes, I ask you also, genuine yoke fellow, assist them, since they contended with me in the gospel, since they were also part of, you could say, the army. They also served in, in, in Jah's army, and they contended also in the good news. Um, you are Euodius and Syntyche, Syntyche um, as well as with Clement, Clement of Alexandria. Clement of Alexandria, and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the Book of Life. Now, there's a footnote, and we touched on it in, in the other part um, of, of the reasoning here on prayer, and we're going to get back into that reasoning on prayer, but we want to make a, a couple of, of words on, on yoke and how yoke is connected with the true Rastafari discipleship and how to understand this. It says, referring to two oxen pulling a plow, used as a metaphor, or Bamarinya, we say semina work, it's semina work, right? It's used as a metaphor, or wax and gold. Yoke fellow refers to being yoked together with another to bear a common burden. I want you to understand this. It's yoke fellow refers to being yoked together with another to bear a common burden. Now, in the Gospels, or rather the Epistles, we are exhorted and reminded not to be um, unequally yoked. And no doubt you may recall that particular scripture where it reminds us not to be unequally yoked, and that's Second Corinthians. Turn your Bibles to Second Corinthians, chapter six, and this is also speaking on the ministry. In other words, for us, the line of just society of His Majesty, but the true ministry, the ministry of true Rastafari of the true Ethiopian Hebrews. Here, there's an appeal at verse eleven, Second Corinthians chapter six, verse eleven. There's an appeal to separation and cleansing, to being separate, be ye separate. And it's speaking to the Corinthians or to the church at Corinth. All of them were Christian or Messianics, but this is a particular church that was located in a region that was known as Corinth or Corinth. And it says, O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open to you, our heart is enlarged. Now here, Hawaii of Paulos, our Coptic Hebrew brother is practicing the opening of the mouth. He says, our mouth is what is open to you. We are opening the mouth. We're going to speak the makaru. We're going to speak the divine word, that which is right and that which is true. 
ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. In other words, he's saying, he's saying the strain is not mine, but the strain is yours. Because what you're going to do with it, the strain is not mine. He's saying, now for a recompense in the same, I speak as to my children. He's saying, I'm speaking just like I would to my children. You understand, who, who, who now have to be taught these things so that they can go through their rite of passage and they can be adults. They can be grown folks in this ministry of the Moshiach, in this ministry of Christos, of, of the Christ. Be ye also enlarged. In, in, in other words, stop having this, in other words, be, be, be hardical, not artificial. Be, be enlarged in heart. You know, verse, it says, be ye not unequally yoked. yoked to, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't be yoked together with those who don't bear the true faith, the mitmenon. For what fellowship, notice that, what fellowship, remember in this particular teaching we're breaking down Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42, we're speaking on four of the five um, aspects of the true church. In other words, the church is built on the foundation of the faith, the faith in our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So that's the foundation. Then it has the Apostles' Doctrine though the teaching of the apostle, then it has fellowship, then it has breaking of bread or communion, the Eucharist, the Korban, then it has prayers. And notice prayer is not first, but prayer is last. Why would prayer be last? Because one has to learn what is prayer, how to pray, has to learn of the true God and King of Kings, has to learn of the Spirit, has, has to be study and show themselves approved. This is why Christ says, take my yoke, take my discipline upon you, and learn of me. We must learn of our black Lord and Savior Yeshua, HaMoshiach. In addition to him being black, we must learn the teaching, that which is spiritual. You understand know that which is spiritual. So he says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what? Fellowship. So if unbelievers are not in the teaching, therefore how can we fellowship with those who are not in the teaching? In other words, how can we be on a brother and brother, a wendem and wendem basis, or a hut and hut basis, a sister and sister basis? Because we don't have the same father and mother. And since spiritually speaking, that seed is of the Father, the Word is of the Father, and that law is of the Mother. You understand? And it's through that schoolmaster, which is the law, that we are now brought from immaturity to maturity. And this is all connected with the Torah portions and with the teachings of His Imperial Majesty. It says, For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Or like, civilization of the king of kings with the savagery of Babylon. What fellowship? We're not brothers. You understand? We're not brothers. They're not sons and daughters. They're creatures. They're creatures of God. We are children of God because we've gone through that new birth. You understand? So you cannot be a, just because you're a human being, you're not a child of God. You're a creature. He created you like he created the rock and the stone and everything else. He created these people. Even the so-called evil people or the wicked, he created, he's still their creator too. You understand whether they like it or not, but they are not righteous. They are unrighteous because they have not gone through the door of the Moshiach. They have not gone through Christ. They have not been born again. And what communion? Communion, now notice the word communion is the breaking of bread. What communion? Can we really break bread? Even in a Rastafari sense, can we even break this bread? Can we even break herbal herbal bread with them? I think not, and I know not. You understand that? We don't know that according to the word. That's not a part of our science, our scientia, our knowledge in the King of Kings and His Christ. We can't even break bread. Now think about that for a moment. How many ones and ones have we smoked herb with that, 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 that even told us straight out that they don't even care about King of Kings, Christ, any of that is like the herb? And so we're breaking bread, and then we wonder why we're getting criminalized with the rest of these people. You see what I'm saying? Because we have not heard the call to be ye separate and, and, and to cleanse. 
So it's an appeal to separation. It's a limina. It's a petition, a request, an appeal, a beseeching to separation and cleansing. Mm. Now, furthermore, in verse 15, it says, and what concord, like what agreement, in other words, hath Christos with Belial? Belial. Now, when you look at that word Belial, I know some of y'all might be, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's, that, what's, that, what's that Billy Gold name? What, what, Will Smith? You know what I'm saying? Y'all might be, y'all love Will Smith. He's, I think he's an all right actor. He's funny in some things. I used to watch The Prince of Belial. Belial. That's Belial. That's one of the names of Satan. That's one of the names of the devil. Yeah, I bet you didn't know. The Prince of Belial. The Prince of Belial is the same as Belial. Belial. B E L I A L. Bamarinya is Menomnate Sawoch. Menomnate, ask some of the Ethiopians if you know them. What does Menomnate? Menomnate means worthlessness. You understand? Know worthless. Spiritually speaking, they're worthless. According to God's covenant and according to us as Beta Israel, they are worthless. You understand? Know that's worthless. So, what concord have Christ with Belial, with the prince of the demons? Or what part hath he that believeth? that admits, that has our main, objectively and subjectively imnet with an infidel or a kahadi. Infidel, bamarinya, means kahadi. Kahadi means one who kada, kada, denies. You understand? One who's a denier. What, what part hath one who admits with one who denies? And what agreement hath the temple of God, the Mekades of Hashem, Ha Elohim Baruchu, has of idols, American idol, European idol, African idols, whatever kind of idols. It's the same idol, idolatry. For ye are the temple of the Mekades of the living God. You see, they have gods. The heathens have gods, but their gods are dead gods. Their gods, here's some of their gods right here. You see, this is their God. You see, it says one God. This is their one God right here. This is their one God. You know what I'm saying? This is their one God. This is the one God of Babylon. You know what I'm saying? This is the one God of Babylon. In fact, check out the other teaching that we just did on um, uh, paying bills and the Babylonian bell. You know what I'm saying? Not Taco Bell, but I'm sure that's a bell that they'd be ringing too. You understand? But all that's just idols. For ye are the, we are the temple of the living God, not the dead God. You understand? As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, this is connected in Revelation with that new name that we know through Revelation is Rastafari. That is the new name. Wherefore, come out from among them. In other words, separate yourself. Come out from among them. This is speaking to separation, which is speaking as true to Kedisna, Kedisna, holiness. And even the Nazarite vow, if we call the Nazarite vow, it's a vow to Kedisna, to separation, because the holiness means separation, that we are separate to God's use. You understand? Know saying? We are separate to God's service. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith Adonai, saith Jah Adonai, or Yah Adonai. And touch not the unclean. Touch not. This is, don't mean just esoterically touch, you know, physically touch, but let, let's not be touched by them. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't be touched by their fallen angels. Please, don't get touched by their fallen angels. Neither touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. The word receive in the Hebrew and the Ethiopic is Kabbalah. I will Kabbalah. I will Kabbalah you. I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. Yes, it says sons and daughters. Not just we as the sons are the children, but also our sisters are the daughters of the true God of El Shaddai, or saith the Lord Almighty, the Lord Almighty. Now, what is so beautiful and clear about this is that the connection with yoke, because we want to stick on that point about yoke, because when Hawadi Apollos here, he heals up two sisters, Euodius and Syntyche, you understand, Euodius and Syntyche, 
that they may be of the same mind and Adonai. In other words, that they may keep consistent, that they may stay in the same mind with the master. Because we stay in the same mind with our master, with Jah Adonai. You know what I'm saying? Jah Rastafar. We stay in the same mind, and we stay in the same mind with one another. If we stay in his mind, we don't have to worry about, oh, we need to get united. We need to be in his mind, in the same mind, and teach of his majesty is prerequisite. So, now when we return here to Philippians chapter 4, at verse 3, where it says, true yoke fellow. Now, a true yoke fellow will must recognize the need for separation, for, for separation. And when you understand the idea of being yoked, you understand, being yoked, be, being of the same yoke, even what we mentioned before with the, when David sought to bring the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem, he couldn't do it at first. Because he had a good idea. Others also probably contributed to the idea. We just get some oxen and we get the ark and we just we bring it here. And, and he did that. But what happened was that a particular man tried to touch it when he thought the ark was falling off of the, 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 the cart. He tried to touch it and, and, he, and he died. And David got shot, you know, like, I don't know if that was a brethren or his or who it was, but he got shot with a really relationship, and he allowed it to be in Obed Adam's um, place for a while, one of, one of the Israelite or Israelitish people. And then the Bible says that he heard that this one whose who's barn, that the ark was in somebody's barn, and that this person was being blessed. You understand? And then he had to go to the priest and find out, what was I doing wrong? And the priest showed him out of the word that Yahweh says, when you're going to bring up the ark, make sure you bring it up with, with, with two oxen that never knew yoke before. In other words, two oxen that you didn't use for, the oxen even had to be holy. The oxen could not have been used for any other purpose, to plow your land or, or do it. It could have never had a yoke on it. In other words, be used in a servile manner. This had to be, in a sense, virgin oxen. You understand? And when he understood that, and he understood the other rites and rituals to bring up the ark, this is one reason why the Ethiopians probably haven't seen the ark in a long time, too, is because the, the priestesses and all the rest of the priests, rather, are all in the New Testament, but they don't understand the Old Testament foundation. And this is one of the major problems, systems, errors, in modern Christianity. So the idea of being yoked is so very important. That's why I said if you love mother, father, sister, brother, son, daughter, whatever, more than me, you are not worthy of me. See, because a lot of folks are in yoked with that. You understand? Uh, you know, they're in yoked with their fleshical families over the spiritual family, you know? And you may not understand the reasons for people doing that, but first of all, it's ignorance. Now, if you know that you're not supposed to do that and you still do that, that's disobedience. And they said disobedience is like the sin of witchcraft. So you, might not, you don't have to be burning no candles, making no pentacles or whatever like that. But if you know what the truth is in that sense and one goes against that, especially in such a core way, being unequally yoked, then in a sense what happens to them, you know, happens for righteous and just reasons. And I mention this because many of us have suffered loss, you understand, because we were trying to be yoked to ones and ones who we thought we had certain sort of earthly, worldly kind of relationship while not really understanding the spirituality or the application of the word, maybe not having a clear enough definition, not having an HD high-definition view of this word. This is why study, we have to study to show ourselves approved to God. The standard is to understand his word in context as well as in application. So this is just a little message on yoke and yoke fellow as we find it in this particular portion of, 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 of Scripture right here in uh, uh, Philippians as it connects with the Master's teaching in Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30, as we find it in 2 Corinthians, um, I think it's at chapter, chapter 6, and, and to understand the various usage of that idea yoke. You understand and when he says to, to take his yoke upon us and that his yoke 
is, is easy. It's not a difficult thing. It's basically the personal discipleship and personal, um, and personal uh, uh, discipline. So more to come on this particular subject matter. But once again, brothers and sisters, understand what Christ's yoke is, what personal discipleship is, and each of us must take personal responsibility. And only then can we really be our brother and sister's keeper and can be truly the sons and daughters of the true and living God. So once again, my brothers and sisters, Shalom, Rastafarine, Rasiadinos Tefarine, otherwise known as Wendem, Brother Yadin.